Which nut do you think will play better? The original nut here, or the replacement nut that I made here? The nut will make or break your guitar. When I started working with Steve Kubeka back in 2005, that was one of the first things he taught me. And he's absolutely right. The string spacing at the nut is probably the most overlooked factor that affects your guitar's playability, and it affects it drastically. After years of painstakingly spacing nut slots by eye, and never getting the results I dreamed of with the Stumac string spacing rule, I came up with my own method for spacing nut slots. And listen to me. It's 100% foolproof. It will work perfectly every single time on any stringed instrument that has a nut. If you watch this video all the way through, you're going to have exclusive knowledge that will enable you to fearlessly and perfectly space nut slots on even the most intimidating instruments, such as 12-string bass, 12-string guitar, mandolin, and even more. I'm even including an updated version of my video on slotting 12-string nut slots from 2021. I actually first started brainstorming this method in 2017, and after putting it through its paces for over six years, I can say with confidence that this is the best and most foolproof method for cutting evenly spaced nut slots. And this is the definitive, most up-to-date video about how to do it. Remember, the nut will make or break your guitar, so let's take a look at how to get it perfect every single time. I'll be using a six-string guitar for this demonstration, but the techniques and mathematical formula apply to any stringed instrument with a nut. The first step to spacing is cutting the slots for the outermost strings. The secret here is a four-inch double square. The steel body of the double square butts up flat against the side of the neck with the ruler of the double square behind the first fret. Notice where the bevel of the fret is. A good rule of thumb is to space the outermost strings 4 64ths of an inch from the fret bevel on either side. That would be about 63 thousandths of an inch, or 1.58 millimeters. Put the ruler of the double square right up against the edge of the first fret, then adjust the ruler as needed until the 4 64ths marking is exactly in line with the edge of the fret bevel. Then firmly lock the ruler in place. The edge of the ruler can now act as a fence for your nut file. Place the nut file right up against the edge of the ruler, and keeping it in full contact with the edge of the ruler the whole time, cut the slot for the string. Flip the double square over, and repeat the exact same procedure on the other side. For the high E string, I'll be using a Stumac 10 thousandths pull stroke gauge saw, which is a lot more rigid and stable than the equivalent size nut file. Double check the spacing, then deepen the slots so you can tune the strings to pitch without having them pop out. The double square does a great job, but it helps to have left the nut a little proud on both sides, so you have room to align it and get both these strings the exact same distance from the fret bevel on either side. To space the inner strings, we'll use a formula. A minus B divided by C equals S. To find A, use digital calipers to measure the distance between the inside of the two outermost strings. In this example, A equals 1.418 inches. To find B, add the individual diameters of the inner strings together. In this case, we have four inner strings, measuring 30 thousandths for the A string, plus 22 thousandths for the D string, plus 15 thousandths for the G string, plus 11 thousandths for the B string. That all adds up to 78 thousandths for B. To find C, count the number of spaces between the strings. On a six string guitar, there are five spaces. On a four-string bass, there are three spaces, and so on. Then plug all of those numbers into the A minus B divided by C equals S formula. Working the formula out on a calculator, we take 1.418 and subtract 0.78, which gets us 1.34. Then we divide that by 5 and get 0.268 inches. This is S, which is the width of the spaces between the strings needed for perfectly equal string spacing. And here's where the magic begins. Take your digital calipers, set them to S, and lock them. With the calipers locked, it functions as a fence. Just like the 4-inch double square functioned as a fence when we were setting the spacing for the outermost strings. With the jaw tips on the fingerboard, one jaw goes against the previous string, and the other jaw acts as a fence for the nut file, keeping it at the exact spacing necessary to get equal spaces between every string. For the B string, a 10 or 12 thousandths wide X-Acto razor saw works best, as the 10 and 13 gauge nut files are too flimsy. 
However, it won't fit under the calipers. The solution is to grind away a small portion of the spine and blade. You could do this to one of the Stumac pull stroke gauge saws, but a razor saw will be a lot cheaper. Either way, you're left with a solid, clean cut that will sit snugly along the caliper jaws, ensuring that your slot spacing stays as perfect as possible. After cutting a shallow set mark, unlock the calipers, tune the strings up, and measure between the strings to verify that they're the correct distance apart. If the space is a little wider or narrower than it should be, angle your nut file inward or outward while you cut to move the string over slightly, then re-measure. Variations of a few thousandths are inevitable, so don't go too crazy. Get as close as you can, and split the difference if necessary. Then it's time to cut the slots to depth. Be sure that your setup is dialed in with your exact desired neck relief, as that greatly affects the action at the first fret. I prefer my necks as close to dead straight as possible, meaning zero relief. I check relief in the playing position using a digital neck relief gauge from G-Tech Guitars. Once the relief is set, you can put a capo on the first fret to eliminate the first fret action as a variable, and set your preferred action for each individual string at the 12th or 17th fret. A string action gauge or a digital action gauge are my preferred measurement tools. With the neck relief and the string action set, you're ready to remove the capo and cut the nut slots to the perfect depth. For years I did this by eye, but in recent years I've been using a digital action gauge exclusively for setting nut slot depth. It has a free falling probe that rests on top of the string without lowering it, so you can zero the meter out, then press the string down to the fret to find the exact action in thousandths of an inch. The measurements I came to with the neck just about dead straight are 15 thousandths on the three bass strings and 9 thousandths on the three treble strings. These are the same specs that Dan Earlywine uses in the Guitar Player Repair Guide, and I would certainly never go any lower than this. Shooting for several thousands higher will provide a nice safety margin and will still result in extremely low action compared to factory specifications. Now, paired string nuts deserve a special mention. Examples are 12 string guitar, 8 string bass, mandolin, and 12 string bass. Follow exactly the same steps I just laid out with one addition. Use the back of a nut file or a feeler gauge as a fence for your nut file when slotting the second string in the string pair. Remember how we use the caliper jaws as a fence when slotting a regular nut? This is exactly the same idea. Now we're just using a spacer of an exact width instead of caliper jaws set to an exact width. The purpose they serve is identical. However, most calipers will need to be open to a minimum of 200 thousandths of an inch in order to be used as a fence for a nut file. The feeler gauge simply covers all widths below 200 thousandths, which is perfect for paired string nuts. Aside from that, use it exactly the same way we used the calipers earlier. Hold the feeler gauge securely against the previous string and use it as a fence while you cut the slot for the next string in the group. You can also put a feeler gauge or nut file in the nut slot that's the same diameter as the string instead of the string itself. Extremely thin strings, like the B, high E, or octave G strings, don't have enough mass for a feeler gauge or nut file to brace against them. It's a little tricky at first, holding two nut files in one hand as a fence, and cutting along them with a nut file in your other hand, but you'll get the feel for it. To clarify this concept, Treat the pair as one big single string. Why? Because the first string in the pair, the last string in the pair, and the space in between the string pairs all effectively form one big single string. And then it becomes apparent how paired string nuts are just as easy to cut with the exact same method we used earlier. Simply proceed with the A minus B divided by C equals S formula as usual with one final caveat. When solving for B, which is the diameter of all the inner strings added together, you need to first select the distance you want between each string pair, then treat each string pair as a big single string. That means adding the string diameters within the pair together, then adding the width of the pre-selected feeler gauge to be used as a spacer. For example, let's say these mandolin strings are 42 thousandths each, and I used a 32 thousandths feeler gauge as a fence between them. 42 thousandths plus 42 thousandths would be 84 thousandths, then 84 thousandths plus 32 thousandths would give us a grand total of 116 thousandths. Again, remember, the total of all those measurements added together can be thought of as a big single string. 
Solve for b by treating the remaining inner strings the same way, then proceed with the formula. Use the feeler gauge trick for slotting each new string pair, and before you know it, you'll have a paired string nut slotted perfectly in almost as little time as it would take you to perfectly slot a non-paired string nut. And, as mentioned earlier, this will work even on tripled strings like on a 12-string bass. Once you understand how this works, there will be no nut on earth you won't be able to slot with perfect precision. Remember to use your calipers to double check your spacing every step of the way and correct accordingly, and you'll never again stray from the path of getting perfectly even nut slot spacing every single time. You'll also have the ability to decide how close you want the string pairs on paired string nuts, which is a tremendous advantage. You're not going to see super close string pairs on any commercial instruments, because the skill and precision required is simply too high. But those closer string pairs can go a very long way in preventing problems with accidental string muting. You'd be amazed at how dramatically using more narrowly spaced string pairs can impact the playability of paired string instruments, such as 12-string guitar. On this mandolin, I used a 42 thousandths feeler gauge between the string pairs, and you can see how much closer together this is than it was on the original nut, which was closer to 80 thousandths between the string pairs. And that's not all. With the old plastic nut on top and the hand-cut bone nut I made on the bottom, you can see how the bone nut has not only narrower string pair spacing, but is wider overall. This translates to having a lot more room, which dramatically reduces the likelihood of accidental string muting, and it makes accurate fretting much easier in general. Just one side note. Make sure you keep the height of the nut low, meaning you don't bury the strings too deeply in the slots. Narrow string pair spacing means you'll have a very thin wall of nut material between the pairs, and the taller that wall is, the more fragile it'll be. In other words, keep your nuts low if you don't want to accidentally break them off. I feel like I've heard a divorce lawyer give similar advice, though I'm not really sure. But whether you're slotting paired string nuts or normal single string nuts, having perfectly equal spaces between the strings makes a world of difference in feel. You'd be surprised how few nuts off the shelf are spaced anywhere even close to even, and remember what my friend and mentor Steve Kubeka said, the nut will make or break your guitar. When you realize the gravity of that, you'll realize how valuable this foolproof nut slot spacing technique really is. If you appreciated this video, hit that like button. It really goes a long way in motivating me to keep the videos coming. Be sure to check my nut making playlist on my YouTube channel playlist tab for the most up to date versions of all my videos, as well as videos on topics not covered here, like filling low nut slots, rounding the edges of the nut, and more. There's always too much to cover in any single video, and that means there's always more videos to make. So stay tuned for more Guitar Everything, right here on Guitar MD.